Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here as we get ready for the qualifying session for Division 2 of the NCAA Skittles Super Speedway Series here at the Daytona International Speedway. Yesterday, we had our qualifying session for Division 1 and set the field for that event. It's time to set the field here today. 30 minutes here in this first round for the 40 drivers in Division 2. And the top 10 speeds, top 10 drivers will move on to the 10-minute second round to determine the pole position, the front row, and the remainder of the top 10 in the starting grid. Spots 11 through 40 will be determined in this qualifying session. A little bit longer of a qualifying session, 30 minutes here in round one to give opportunity for me to be able to go through the field and introduce you to the drivers that you will be seeing during the course of this season here in Division 2. Let's get to the first car that went out on track, if I can find his name here on the chart. As you see, a lot of drivers taking advantage of heading out on track here early. There we go. So the first car that we're going to look at, first car that went out there, is the number 30 Doritos Nacho Cheese Chevrolet of Simon, or I'm sorry, of Sadal Solera. I believe I'm saying that correctly. If I am saying any of your people's names incorrectly, please do not hesitate to correct me. I will try and uh, remedy that because I want to be able to say everyone's name correctly during the course of this season. I'm also going to bring up our ticker. And you can keep an eye here. The ticker will show the top 10. Top 10 speeds move on to round 2. So you'll be able to keep an eye on that as I go through the field and introduce each one of these drivers. But uh, Sadal Zolera out of PCMB Motorsports. Making his way onto the track there is uh, Alex Gray, a former Pizza Deck Series winner. I believe he also is a, a former winner in the Coors Light Truck Series. I might be getting him confused with Patrick Curtis, though. Alex Gray driving the 08 out of ML Motorsports, the Exalta Chevrolet. Zachary Fitzwater, we saw his teammate Johnny Gardner back in Division 1. Fitzwater here in Division 2, the Auto Trader Chevrolet. Fitzwater, a multi-time winner in the Hershey's Cup Series. And we just showed you the uh, number 30 Doritos Nacho Cheese Chevy. Here's the Doritos Cool Ranch number 4 Chevy of Simon Solera, who is the older brother of Sadal. So a couple of brothers going to be here in this division before also out of PCMB Motorsports. Charles Sanfer is the lone Retro Racing Enterprises driver here in Division 2. We saw his two teammates, Kyle Matthews, Jessica Shelton, in round or in uh, Division 1. So Sanfer is kind of a fish out of water here. He's got to make friends with non-teammates if he's going to get pushed to the front in the Super Speedway Series races. Catching up to the 84 of Chris Maley. We'll get to him in a moment. We're looking at Josh Drake. Number 66, Autism Speaks Chevrolet. Josh Drake piloting that car out of Ward Burton Racing. We saw his teammate, Laurent Lamount, actually make it into the second round of qualifying in Division 1. So we'll see if his teammate here can produce just as much speed. Rob Evans, number 65, out of uh, Evans Motorsports. Been a while since we've seen Rob Evans. Evans ran his rookie season in the Pizza Hut X Series last year. He was able to pick up a win that season as well. 01 SunTrust Chevrolet of William Brock. I remember I was talking about in the streams, I was saying, I knew I had a William Brock scheme somewhere, and I was wanting to be able to transfer it over. Well, guess what? I found it, and here it is. James Shelley, we saw two of his teammates, Andrew Miller and Seth Cole in Division 1, James Shelley here in Division 2, the first data Clover Chevrolet, James Shelley of course the defending Pizza Hut X Series champion. Patrick Smith, I believe he is the only driver from JJ Motorsports that's in this division. We saw Riley Spurley Tube, Jay Jefferson, and Roger Ray over in Division 1. So Patrick Smith, very much like Charles Sanfer, the lone driver for his team and in this division, and going to have to make some friends 
in uh, different organizations. Driving the Unifirst sponsorship on his Chevy Camaro. Jeff Scott, two-time winner last season in the Last of Us Light Series. After not even making the first race of the season. Driving the number 35 West Virginia Surge Dodge. And that is out of uh, Jeff Scott Motorsports. Daniel Voiles, very familiar looking paint scheme here. That's the car he drove in last season of the Hershey's Cup Series. Daniel Voiles back behind the wheel of the Jelly Belly Ford Fusion out of World NOS Racing. And this will look very familiar to people who followed the Coors Light Truck Series because this is the number 34 Boy Scouts of America car of Trey Wright. And that was a scheme that was run last season for Trey Wright's team, American Motorsports. Alex Tanker was the driver behind the wheel at the time in the Truck Series. Stepping out of line there, Simon Bloomfield, the Discord Toyota Camry number 21 out of PCMB Motorsports. PCMB Motorsports has uh, two Toyotas and two Chevrolets. We saw one of their Toyotas, uh, Patrick Sitch in the first division. Here's the second one here of Simon Bloomfield. Of course, both the Chevrolets are the two Solera brothers. Well, kind of ironic, a Cars sponsored by M&M's, and there's a Sadler behind the wheel, but it's not Elliot Sadler, this is Eric Sadler, out of the uh, Gamington Motor Racing Stables. Eric Sadler making his debut here, the Dodge. Just saw Levi McIntyre making his way by, the very familiar Marvel Studios Captain America Ford. Levi McIntyre driving out of... Uh, Young Motorsports this season. Teammates to JT Bryant, Dylan Young. We'll see Dylan Young in this division, actually, I believe. There's a teammate, actually, to the 14. O'Neill Baldwin, the number 11, out of Gamington Motor Racing. Baldwin making his return back to the channel. Jordan Lopez. We saw him last season in the Hershey's Cup Series driving the number 79 Toyota out of Kev Shearer Racing Tech. Well, this season, same looking scheme in the Skittles Super Speedway Series, but a different number, the number 45. Alexander Rowe, the number 83 Red Bull Toyota, very similar look to the Brian Vickers 83 out of Fallout Racing. And to his inside, the aforementioned Dylan Young driving the bright orange Hooters scheme this season in Skittles Super Speedway Series action. Hey look, it's Lightning McQueen, Cut Chow, the Rusties, number 95 of Nathan Ormond. Ormond driving out of Nathan Ormond Motorsports. You could call it Nom Racing. And to his inside, Benny Watson, former Pizza Next Series champ. One of three drivers in this division for Otter Island Motorsports. We saw Carter Friesen, the lone wolf for that team over in Division 1. Benny Watson and his two teammates over here in Division 2. So we'll have to see if that Toyota team gets an advantage having three cars in this division. Kyle Langland, the number 62. He's actually a teammate to the 26 of Daniel Voiles, the Chicago Bears sponsorship on his machine, former driver in the Pizza Hut X Series. And right behind him, there's the third entry in this division out of Gamington Motor Racing, the number 10 YouTube Dodge of the team owner, Fury Gamington. Saw him in the Coors Light Truck Series last year. There's a second entry, actually, out of Otter Island Motorsports. That's Jesse Turner in the number 77. Jesse Turner, a former Pizza Deck Series driver. I believe he was also in the Coors Light Truck Series. And up on the top side there, these drivers better make sure they're all wearing their seatbelts or the cop's going to pull them over. There's the number 56 of Vince Elmriego driving the uh, California, I believe it's California, California Highway Patrol Ford. Throwing back to the... Uh, cop cars that patrol the California highways. I hope it's California. I hope I have the right state. 
I can actually look right now, make sure I have the right street. Is it California? It is California. How about that? We already documented Josh Drake. There's Michael Norman, the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom Chevrolet, Michael Norman Motorsports. And this is actually a, a little bit of a historical moment because it's the first time in a long time Michael Norman is racing in a series. Michael Norman in a state of semi-retirement in most series, but he has decided to get back behind the wheel. Michael Norman really likes super speedway racing, so not a surprise to see him in this series as he makes his return to the uh driver's seat on this channel just by Jake Galloway in the number 23 Galloway was in the Coors Light Truck Series last season if I recall driving the number 11 now driving the number 23 Sports Clips Chevrolet that car is out of Galloway Wortham Motorsports well we mentioned that there was a teammate for James Shelley in this division and there's the fourth entry out of Backmarker Motorsports Carson Gum the Town of Salem Coven Chevrolet. Beautiful car. Has that kind of metallic look to it. I love cars that have that kind of look to it. That's why I like Levi McIntyre's car. It's got that metal look to it with the Captain America shield. Tristan Allen, the number 37. Dustless Blasters, University of Ohio Chevrolet. Out of Night Racing. Tristan Allen and Andrew Miller, they worked together quite a bit in super speedway racing, but Miller's over in Division 1, so Tristan Allen and that single car team going to have to find some friends. This is going to be one of the toughest drivers for me to remember the name of because I'm so used to Zach Flickinger being in my series. This is actually William Flickinger in the number 44 Brandt Toyota this season, so I'm going to have to remember that it is not Zach, it is William that is the Flickinger in this series, but he's driving the number 44 out of Flickinger Racing. I believe this is the first time that William is uh, has been in a series of mine too, if memory serves me correctly. If not, I don't remember what other series William was in that I commentated on. Looking here at the number 20 of Alex Benyako. This is a uh, car out of Flying Aces International. We saw two of his teammates move on to the second round of qualifying in Division 1. Vance Caldwell and William Duncan will also see his other teammate here in this division momentarily. There's Charles Sanford, the Go Bowling Chevrolet. We already documented him. Behind him, Chris Maley, the Samsung Toyota Camry. We saw Alexander Rowe in the 83 earlier. This is his teammate. Both of them here in this division, so we'll see if they're going to be able to work together. There's the third and final entry out of Otter Island Motorsports, Nathan Stapleton. And the number 72 Advanced Auto Parts Powerade Toyota Camry. Of course, Nathan Stapleton was uh, in the playoffs for the Coors Light Truck Series back in Season 2. There's Keith Batson. Look at this. Side by side between two defending champions. James Shelley winning the Pizza Series Championship last season, and Keith Batson, the defending Hershey's Cup Series champion. Back in the very familiar number 39 Mac Tools Ford out of KEB Racing Enterprises. Looking for another championship here on this channel. I know there's a couple of drivers that I haven't hit on. And there's one of them. That's the one I was looking for, actually. The 13 of Jack Halleck, the Final entry out of Flying Aces International, the Menards Turtle Wax Ford. Oh, we got trouble! That is a car we didn't talk about yet, the 29 of Garcia, right back down in front of traffic, and he got somebody. He got John Andrews. Andrews in the 57, and the 29 of Adam Garcia, both drivers that I hadn't talked about yet, and they both have just been caught up in a wreck. But you'll see what happened on the SRA split cam. It looks like both those drivers will be going to backup machines. Wow. Well, we'll hopefully see, be able to talk about them in a moment if they come out with their backup cars. We're looking here at the 96 of Caleb Farrell. Been a long time since we've seen Caleb Farrell's in the series, I think. Last time I remember seeing Caleb Barrow was back, I think it was in the Hershey's Cup Series, when he drove the number 96, or no, I'm sorry, the number 95 MetLife Chevrolet. I think that was back in Season 5 or Season 4 
of the Hershey's Cup Series, and I remember he was driving it for Swiggly Motorsports at the time. There you see the smoke still lingering there in turn three. Lopez returning back to the track. Oh, there's a driver we haven't covered yet. Number 15 of Cody Lamas in the Jimmy Johnson 2006 throwback out of ML Motorsports, a teammate to the 08 of Alex Gray, who we saw during the top of the qualifying session. So an opportunity for a couple of drivers to work together there. And we're already up to two drivers that will be going to backup cars in this session that we know of. John Andrews in the 57 and Adam Garcia in the 29. And we haven't talked about either of those drivers yet. I don't know if they've gotten back on the track yet or not. There's some damage it looks like on the 08 of Alex Gray. He's coming to pit road. Oh, we got we had trouble. Charles Sanford and Alex Benyako also with damage. We had another wreck somewhere. I think Gray's going to be okay. Benyako and Sanford, though, I'm not so sure about. A lot of front-end damage on the 20. Sanford is smoking. The whole left front wheel well is completely gone off that race car, and they are starting to pile up in terms of these drivers that are going to be going to backup cars. And as I'm looking at our leaderboard, I'm not seeing anybody currently up there that has been involved in any of these wrecks. So... Unlike the wreck we saw where Cody Smart forfeited his spot in advancing to the second round of qualifying, there's Adam Garcia. He hasn't yet returned to the track yet. But with Cody Smart not moving on to the next round, forfeiting his spot, I'm not seeing a case of that here yet with the drivers we've seen that have had to go to backup cars. So, so far, we have had... Adam Garcia, John Andrews, Charles Sanford, and Alex Benyako, who are all going to be starting near the rear of the field for their Daytona race to start off the season, regardless of where they're scored in this qualifying session. I'm hoping that the 29 and... Well, the 29, I think, is still on pit road. Yeah, well, he's sitting on pit road, but let's talk about him, I guess. Adam Garcia out of Fallout Racing. And I believe, does he have a teammate in this? I don't know if he has a teammate in this division. Uh, yes, he does, actually. It's the third entry for Fallout Racing. His teammates, uh, Chris Maley and Alexander Rowe, we showed you. So, wow, three of them, three Toyotas, going to be able to work together here. So we got three Toyotas out of Otter Island Motorsports, and we got three Toyotas out of Fallout Racing. All the Toyotas here in Division 2. I don't know if the 57 of John Andrews, if they've gotten a backup car prepared for him and gotten him back out there yet or not. We'll look, go through the field and look. As we still have over 11 minutes left in this qualifying session. Yep, there he is. Andrews is back on track. He's working with the 37 of Tristan Allen. John Andrews in the Sonic... What's it called? C Team Sonic Racing? I think that's what the sponsorship is. On his number 57, that car out of Andrews Racing. And I don't think he has a teammate in this uh, division. I believe his only teammate is Diego Yepes, who we saw back in Division 1. There's Adam Garcia trying to get back up to speed. We know he and Andrews will be going to backup cars. Charles Sanford will be going to a backup car. Alex Benyako will be going to a backup car. And right now, fastest car on track. If we can find him. There he is, that bright green car. Jesse Turner right now the fastest on track with a 44.663. We saw drivers hitting the 40, or we saw one driver, I should say, hit the 43s in uh, Division 1 in Round 1. Nobody's done that yet, so track conditions may be a little bit different here. Track maybe a little bit slower for these drivers, but right now, Jesse Turner would move on to the next round. Jack Halleck just jumped up to second. Dylan Young's in third. Benny Watson, fourth. Uh, Sado or Simon Solera, rather, in fifth. Nathan Foreman in sixth. 
uh, Kyle Langland seventh. Eighth place right now, Patrick Smith, William Brock ninth, and tenth is Alexander Rowe. If things were to end now, those would be the ten drivers that would move on to round two with a chance of battling for the pole, but this is definitely still not over. And we had another wreck, it looks like. Another wreck in turn three. And it looks like we got some cars coming to pit road, but none of them really that badly damaged. There is some front end damage on Simon Solera. And I don't know if that's going to be fixable or not. Let's see. And keep in mind, he was fifth fastest and he's on pit east to the garage area. And what about the 62 of Langland? He was just on pit road. And he's got rear end damage and he's going to a backup car. So we're now up to six drivers that are in backup cars. And boy, this is a pack right here. This is a pack right here, and we have a new driver at the leaderboard. Caleb Farrell just jumped up there with a 44.644. So we now add Kyle Langlin and Simon Solera, and that's important with adding Simon Solera because Solera is currently the sixth fastest driver on track. So if he doesn't get moved out of the top 10, that's going to be basically the same situation that we had with Cody Smart in Division 1, where even though he was qualified in the top 10, he was actually the fastest in the first round of qualifying, he forfeits his spot, will not move on, and if that's the case, then right now, 11th place would move into the next round of qualifying, and that currently is held by the 83 of Alexander Rowe. Look at this, three wide, two rows deep. Don't know how much speed's going to be produced there. I would look at that 23 of Jake Galloway. He might get a good lap time here. Right now scored 28th fastest on the charts. Let's see if he improves after he was able to catch up to this group. And that lap was slower, actually, for the Sports Clip Chevrolet. And it's going to kill this, this group's momentum. They're about to catch the slower machine of Kyle Langland who is now returned to the track in his backup car so six drivers going to be going to backup cars at this point we have three drivers that'll be in backup cars in division one Jesse Turner was the fastest in this session but now Caleb Farrell has jumped up to that spot there he is he's in this group with William Flickinger Tristan Allen Alex Gray and then a couple of backup cars and Charles Sanford and John Andrews look like Flickinger's coming to pit road that killed the momentum of this group. Langland is up to 10th right now in the 62, but that's not going to matter because he's in a backup machine. James Shelley just jumped up into the top 10. The 71, he's up to 6th, and actually Sadal Solera jumped up to 6th place. So there's a group somewhere here that's producing speed. Oh, here it is. Oh, my goodness, they were almost four wide off that corner. So this group's producing some speed now as they're starting to put some entries up into the top 10. Nobody moved up that lap though as I think everybody was basically just trying to catch their breath after almost a four wide with Simon Bloomfield, James Shelley, Jack Halleck, and I think the other car was uh, Eric Sadler. In this group right here, drivers that are up inside the top 10 are Shelley, Halleck, and I believe the 30 of Solera. Keith Batson dropping to the back of this pack, trying to get some speed here. He's right now 19th fastest on the chart as they're catching up to Nathan Stapleton, 72. With a little less than six minutes remaining, and nobody jumped up there. But remember I told you the 23 of... Jake Galloway was in a good spot. He just jumped up to eighth. And now he might be able to improve on that. Let's see what this lap time is. And it's two tenths slower. Well, right now that four car is continuing to fall down the running order. So we may not have to worry about him forfeiting his spot into the next round of qualifying. Boy, this group here, though, it... It's like a storm brewing. There are three wide, two rows deep. This is giving you a taste of what it's going to be like when all 40 cars are going to be within seconds of each other. 
when they take the green flag to start off the season. Watch for maybe the 35 of Jeff Scott at the tail end of this group to maybe set a lap. Coming to the line, anybody from this group gonna jump up into the top 10? Doesn't look like it. This group trying to produce speed, but there's only five of them. But the current fastest car on track is in this group, the 96 of Caleb Farrell. Looks like a group trying to form here with Lopez, Maley, Fitzwater, Evans, and Voiles. And Cody Lamas not too far behind them. O'Neill Baldwin all by his lonesome 31st fastest. William Brock 14th fastest about to be catched by this group. About to be catched. About to be caught. English, do I speak it? No, I do not. And now Nathan Stapleton's in this group, so we'll see what the 72 can do in terms of speed. Right now he's 35th fastest on the track. Someone from this group could very easily jump up in the leaderboard, I think. Especially if guys are back there like Solera, Almriego, and Sadler, who are just at the tail end of this group and going to get a nice draft off of turn four. Let's see if anyone from the back of this group's going to jump up there. And it's going to be the answer of... No. Nobody did. Nobody improved their lap time. Well, right now, the four of Simon Solera still sits there in the ninth position. So it still would be one driver outside the top ten moving into the next round of qualifying. Eleventh place, which right now is the 99 of Levi McIntyre holding that position. So as they can stand... Both of the Young Motorsports entries in this division would be moving on to the second round of qualifying. Dylan Young solidly positioned in fourth, and McIntyre currently in 11th. So we'll keep our eyes on him here during the closing. Stadium, we got a wreck! Josh Drake around, Carson Gum as well! And they're going to slide back down. Are they going to get out of the way of traffic? They are, and I don't think they really had that much damage either. Oh, Drake just backed up almost into traffic. I think but they're both going to be okay. I don't think they're going to have to go to backup cars. Neither one of them inside the top 10 in speed, though. Drake was 20th and Carson Gum 17th. I think they'll be able to get those cars fixed, though. That wasn't really that big of a wreck for those drivers. And a lot of drivers hitting pit road there, too. Oh, look at Rob Evans spinning off of pit road. It's one way to warm up the tires. He's 21st fastest on the charts, but that was interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a car spin off the entrance of, or the, off the exit of pit road before. That, that's a new one in my books. McIntyre still scored in 11th place, which means he would move on to the next round since the four of Simon Solera is going to have to be in a backup car, so he will forfeit his ninth place qualifying effort. So as things stand right now, it's Farrell, Turner, Halleck, Young, Watson, and then Sadal Solera. James Shelley, Jake Galloway, Nathan Ormond, and Levi McIntyre. So the last two drivers right now that would make it in, you're looking at them right there, the 95 and the 99. With a little less than a minute and a half remaining, can Levi McIntyre hang on to that final transfer spot into the next round of qualifying? Michael Norman right behind him there, trying to make it in. Norman right now is 22nd fastest, and he's going to come to pit road, so any hope of improving will be gone for him. Also, Ormond hitting pit lanes. Ormond's thinking he's pretty much safe to make it into the next round. McIntyre with a big run there on Daniel Voiles. Jesse Turner returning back to the track. He's going to make it to the next round, provided he doesn't get involved in a wreck in these final 45 seconds. McIntyre still scored an 11th. Car that would just miss out would, uh, looks like, be Patrick Smith in 13th. Langland is 12th, but he's going to be in a backup car, so his qualifying time will not be counted. 20 seconds remaining. McIntyre is not in a group, so there's no way he'll be improving on a 44.794. He just hopes nobody else improves on it. 10 seconds to go. We're going to have a little bit of cool down here. Drivers that had crossed the line can complete their lap, and 
Maybe someone from this group might be able to do something like that. Keith Batson's back in this group, tail end of it. He's going to make it before the session comes to a close. He's coming to pit road, so forget that idea. What about maybe Eric Sadler or Vince Almariego? Almariego does not improve. Sadler does not improve. I don't think anybody in this group improved their lap time. And that's really the only other big group that was out there for the most part. Maybe someone here. They're lined up single file. Can someone get enough speed? Maybe Alex Gray. He's 36th fastest. Coming to the line. Did not improve. Sanford did not, but he's in a backup car anyway. Lamas didn't improve. I don't think anybody improved. I think McIntyre is safe. I think McIntyre will be moving on to the final round of qualifying. Along with Farrell, Turner, Halleck, Young, Watson, Sadal Solera, Shelley, Galloway, and Ormond. 10 seconds remaining here. I believe these are the final cooldown 10 seconds, so I think that the standings are official. And now they are. So it's going to be the 10 drivers that will battle drivers it out for the pole for position car. here in this Daytona race will be Caleb Farrell, Jesse Turner, Jack Halleck, Dylan Young, Benny Watson, Sadal Solera, James Shelley, Jake Galloway, Nathan Ormond, and Levi McIntyre. The four of Simon Solera, his time will be disallowed. He's in a backup car. Same for Kyle Langland, who is 12th fastest. And others that have gone to backup cars as well, their time's going to be disallowed as they will be started at the rear of the field. Include Adam Garcia, John Andrews, Alex Benyako, and Charles Sanfer. But spots 11 through 40 basically determined here as we show you down at the bottom of the results here. Drivers that will be starting near the rear of the field for this race. So don't go anywhere. Our top 10 will be moving on to the final round of qualifying to see who's going to be starting on the pole position here this week at Daytona. So now it's time to determine who's going to start on the pole here for the Division 2 Skittle Super Speedway Series race at Daytona. And I do not have the benefit that you guys do of seeing live the NSRA split cam when an incident takes place on track. And so therefore, you guys knew ahead of me that Caleb Farrell, who was the fastest in round one of qualifying, was actually involved in a wreck and actually sustained a great amount of damage and actually had to go to a backup car, as did the 30 of Sadal Solera. So both those drivers who were in the top 10 in the qualifying results, will not be moving on. They forfeit their spots, and so therefore, the next two drivers down the list, which would have been 13th place Patrick Smith and 14th place William Brock, they both move into the next round of qualifying with a chance to qualify in the pole. There you see the 58 of Smith. So 10 minutes for 10 drivers. Fastest lap gets the pole position. And all of these drivers, provided they don't get involved in a wreck here in the second round of qualifying, they will all start the first race of the season for the second division inside of the top ten. Levi McIntyre was actually, I believe, the first car out on track, so he's about to take the green, and he will set the first official lap here in this qualifying session. McIntyre getting in due to... Well, technically, he gets in due to Caleb Farrell going to a backup car. Smith gets in due to uh, Sadal Solera going to a backup car. And Brock gets in due to Simon Solera going to a backup car. Only three drivers went to backup cars for the Division I race. We're going to have seven drivers. No, I'm sorry. Eight drivers go to the rear of the field in backup cars in our Division II Daytona race. Adam Garcia, who's actually... In his second backup car, he got involved in two wrecks in the first round of qualifying. John Andrews, Charles Sanford, Alex Benyako, Kyle Langland, Simon Solera, Sadal Solera, and Caleb Farrell all going to backups. And like I said, for the second straight week now, or not second straight week, but the second straight qualifying session, the fastest car in round one it gets involved in a wreck and does not move on to round two. We saw it happen in Division One where Cody Smart was the fastest in round one, but he got caught up in a wreck, so he had to go to a backup car. And here in Division 2, we ended up having 
Caleb Farrell will be the fastest car on track in round one, but he got involved in a wreck. Levi McIntyre, 46.952. The other drivers so far that have taken time in the 47s. 47.23 for both Smith and Shelly. They're actually tied right now. Let's see if McIntyre improves this time, and he does. 46.460. Jumps back up to the top of the leaderboard. Smith with a 46.545. Dylan Young going to lay down his second lap, and that's going to be good enough to jump up to third, 46.764. Benny Watson just crossed the line. I believe he is just now beginning his first lap. James Shelley held up a little bit, bit there by Nathan Ormond, so he was two-tenths slower than his fastest lap. Ormond just took the green to start his lap as Brock and Galloway both hit the line. Galloway to the top of the board, 46.012. Brock up to second with a 46.284. So these might be the two here that might be the ones to settle it out for the pole position. Jack Halleck, a 47.140. He's by himself. Jesse Turner, who was second fastest in round one. Halleck was third fastest. Turner right now fourth with a 46.468. And... Oh, that was actually just a car that just took time. That was Benny Watson. He's right now 10th fastest. Nathan Ormond with the draft off Shelley and Watson just jumped up to fourth. Shelley up to second, 46.166. Drop him to third as Brock just went back up there to second. And Galloway now has hit the 45s, 45.808. Two tenths faster than Brock. It's a little closer contested, at least right now, early in this uh, session for the pole position. Remember, Preston Plourd laid down, what was it, a 45-7, I think, in round two of the first division qualifying. And nobody could get close to him as Orman to the top of the leaderboard, 45.503. Shelley still in second. He had a 45.626. That's his fastest lap. Benny Watson jumped up to fifth with a 46.218. And now he's third in this line. So let's see if he's going to have something to say about the pole position as he's behind the current pole sitter at this point in time. Nathan Norman, Jake Galloway just hit a 45.5. He and William Brock still trying to make something happen. Ooh, right on the back bumper for Benny Watson. So I don't know if this lap's going to be good enough to get the pole position away from Orman. Let's see. It's the line, 45.623, that moves him up from 5th to 4th. But not good enough to take the pole away from Orman just yet. Shelley just improved his lap again, a 45.517, as he still sits at 2nd. Let's drop back here. It looks like Galloway has lost his drafting partner. William Brock has brought it to Pitt Road. Brock right now 5th fastest. Galloway 3rd fastest. Halleck still by himself. Dylan Young sits on pit road. Jesse Turner with nobody to help him. Same for Levi McIntyre. And Patrick Smith there as well. So right now it's basically, I think, going to be this group that's going to determine our pole sitter because three cars all together here. Watson right on the bumper of Shelley. 45-406. Top of the leaderboard for Benny Watson. With three and a half minutes remaining, Watson now sits on the pole position. Look at Nathan Orman there though, getting a big suck up right in the slipstream of both the 71 and the 79. This could be a really good lap for Ormond. I think it's gonna come down between these three. They've set the three fastest lap times here in this qualifying session, and they're the only ones that are really within any vicinity of each other. So I really think this is where you're going to find your pole sitter, Ormond, on the bumper of the 79. He's not going to stay behind him as Watson moves up. This might hurt his lap time. Let's see if he's able to top Watson at the line. 45-5-3-1, about three one-hundredths off his fastest lap. So right now, Watson still holds the pole position. They're about to... Bypass Dylan Young, who's coming out on track. Young has spent a good portion of this qualifying session on pit road. And I have a feeling that he's probably not going to advance any higher than 10th, but we'll have to wait and see. 
Ormond lost a little bit of ground there. He might be coming to pit road, the 95, and so it looks like it may come down between Watson and Shelley. Uh, no, Ormond is staying out. Let's see if Shelley can improve his lap here. 45.517, his fastest. 45.586 that time. So no improvement. Ormond losing touch with these two. Ran about five tenths slower than his fastest lap. Yeah, we are under the two minute mark. Shelley gonna bypass Benny Watson, so he'll be out in front here. So that won't help Shelley in terms of trying to get a fast draft lap. See if anybody's been able to catch up to anybody. Smith, McIntyre all by themselves. There's maybe a chance for Halleck and Turner. They've caught each other. Halleck actually just jumped up to uh, eighth, and Turner is now up to fifth. So these two might be able to do something. Halleck just ran his fastest lap of the race, as did Turner. So not saying that these guys are maybe going to get the pole, but they could very well jump up into the top five. Turner already there in fifth. Halleck trying to get up there as Galloway currently holds fourth. Halleck's going to have a good lap here, I think. He'll at least get into the 45s, I'm pretty sure. It's a question of where in the 45s. At least we'll put him in the top six as well, I think, as we just had a change for the pole sitter. Up to sixth goes Halleck and Brock. William Brock just jumped up to the top of the leaderboard. In the draft of Jake Galloway, a 45.401, five one thousandths, faster than Benny Watson's lap. So Brock is now up at the top of the leaderboard and currently sits on the pole. I think Watson and Shelley just crossed, so they won't improve. Could be another good lap for Brock. He could maybe hit into the 45 threes. Let's see. To the line, 45.285 for William Brock. Galloway with a 295. That's going to be your front row for the Daytona race here in Division 2. How about that? Galloway was 8th fastest in round 1. Brock was 14th fastest, but got in due to the number of drivers who had to go to backup cars that were faster than him in round one. And Brock, who basically was the last driver to transfer into this second round, he's going to be your pole sitter for the first race of the season for Division Two in the Skill Super Speedway Series here at Daytona. He's going to try for another better lap. Let's see. 263 and Galloway was faster! A 259! A buzzer beater! It's Galloway on the pole instead of Brock! Oh my goodness! Session is now complete! It came down to about five seconds left for the drivers to make it back to the line, and Galloway, the car out in front, is going to best William Brock by four one thousandths to start on the pole. Holy cow! So Galloway will be the pole sitter. The whole time I thought it was going to be Brock and then I realized there was still time remaining in the session. And the session is now complete and officially Galloway at the last minute swipes Drivers, away the pole from car. William Brock. As you can see by four one thousandths, Brock will have to settle the start on the outside of the front row. Then it'll be Benny Watson in third, Ormond in fourth, Shelley in fifth. I really thought that between Watson, Ormond, and Shelley, that was where we were going to find our pole sitter. More the fool me. They'll start the top five, though. Halleck jumped up to sixth, Turner in seventh, and then McIntyre, Smith, and Young really didn't have the benefit of anyone to draft with. They will start eighth, ninth, and tenth for the first race of the season at Daytona. But wow! Who would have thought a qualifying session would be as exciting as it was? But man, that was, that was cool. We basically had the pole sitter already determined in the first division with the lap that Preston Plourd laid down. Nobody was able to touch him. But wow, what a hotly contested pole position it was here in Division 2. And Jake Galloway will be leading the Division 240 drivers to the green here this weekend at Daytona. Hope you guys enjoyed this qualifying session. If you did, be sure to give us a big like, subscribe, and become part of the crew today. We have uh, basically, you've got your full finishing results for your starting grid for the uh, Daytona race. Up next, we've got Division 1's first points paying event. They're going to be beginning their season here at Daytona to be followed by Division 2 
here at Daytona International Speedway. Still a long ways to go in the weekend and a lot to happen. You've been watching Productive Answer A, offline racing at its best.